Welcome to WCYE. Welcome to WCYE. Welcome to WCYE. Welcome to WCYE, where you put the E in WCYE. What's up, WCYE? I'm Lauren Stratford, and I'm going to be your virtual host today. We've got a lot of stuff planned. We've got the student takeover. We've got Pastor Ant coming in with a hot word today. 
and we've got a bunch of other fun interactive things for you to do in the chat down below. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this service as much as I'm gonna enjoy it, and I can't wait to read you guys' comments. Now we're gonna start this big party off with praise and worship. All right, I'm gonna go, and I'll see you guys in a few. Place 
Welcome to World Changes Youth Experience, where you put the E in WCYE. You are the experience. That's right. We're so happy to have you, and we want to make sure that you know that you can find us every Sunday right here in person at 2495 Burdett Road or on YouTube at World Changes Youth Experience for Senior High and WCYE Junior High Studios for Junior High. That's right. Now, what you're about to view is called The Student Takeover, which is a show made for teens by, by teens. teens. And this airs every Sunday right before the word starts. And if you would like to be a part of that, feel free to contact us by email at wcye.productionteam at gmail.com. And we'll plug you right in. If this is your first time here, we want to welcome you and we'd like to connect with you. So make sure you scan that QR code that's on your screen. And we would love, love, love to start building a relationship with you. Yeah. Now, we have an awesome word for you today and we want you to stay tuned for it. So hit us up in the chat. I'll be there and he'll be giving the word. <laughs> Get ready for the experience. Wait to see you there. Peace. the pastor with the blue hair because I really do care. Listen, this is a message for anybody in sixth through eighth grade. If you're watching the stream, we want to direct you to the junior high service that has been created especially for you. You're currently watching the senior high service. And we want to invite you to an experience that's catered just for middle schoolers because you're dealing with things that are just for middle schoolers. So listen, we want to make sure that you're in the right place, but Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. WCY, WCY, All right. world changes, yeah. world changes, yeah. youth experience, youth experience. Now see, we changing the world, man, we changing your views, it's our time to leave, we won't be overlooked just cause we the youth, you ain't heard? 
We the now generation Tried to turn the lights on us We the power generators I ain't worried about a hater I ain't gotta rock the latest God on my side We gon' slide and pull up on Satan Watch me cater this cadence See, don't matter if I'm under or overrated Either way, I'm exceeding expectations Forever patient, never waiting Hello! This is Glory and I am back with Series of the Week. Now this Series of the Week is Sunday Best. Judges, you were amazing. The competitions, you have never seen Sunday Best like this before. Show some love, Fantasia, Shirley, Caesar, Leandria, Johnson. Thank you, Get ready, the best is back. So like picture like a gospel American idol. That's what this is. These people be doing riffs and runs like that's their job. And honestly, it kind of is their job because they're gospel singers. But anyways, it's a great show. You guys should go watch it. It's on BET, you know. Go share the love. It's for Jesus, y'all. And you know, it's like, it's, it literally works like American Idol, America's Got Talent. You make it all the way to the end and then you get a recording contract if you do. So you guys should go watch it. It's great. Bye, say girl, say girl, peace out. Hey y'all, it's your main man Greg and I'm here to make you laugh with the joke of the day. Alright, why could the plank of wood never be entertained? If you think you know the answer, go ahead and drop that in the live chat and I'll be back in just a few seconds, y'all. Hey guys! What up? Hey, there's a little notification button there, but it's right next to the subscribe button over there. So this is what I want yeah. you to do. I want you to hit subscribe hit if you subscribe. haven't already. And then I want you to hit that bell hit to turn the on bell. notifications. So every time we go live, guess what you get? Ding, 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 ding. ding. It's time to get the word. It's time to get the word. Sound the alarm. So we're going to give you a little time to do that right now. And we will wait and give you time to do it. Okay. A few moments later. Five more seconds. All right, so by now you have just let all of your friends know that we are live and service is about to start. Yep. We can't wait to see you. Meet us in the comments. See you soon. What's up guys, my name is Lauren and I'm coming at you with an unpopular opinion. All right, I personally still think breakfast is important and you should eat it every day. A lot of you guys don't eat breakfast anymore, which I find really weird. But if you still do eat breakfast, put down in the comments below what you tend to normally eat while you get ready for your day. I personally am a cereal person. I will eat basically any cereal. My favorite though has to be either Fruit Loops or Captain Crunch. I don't know, maybe you guys are fancy and you just eat toast and eggs or something. But yeah, personally, I'm just a cereal person, pretty basic. That's fine though. <laughs> All right, whatever you like to eat, put it down in the comments below. Or if you're weird and you wait till lunch to eat, I guess put your favorite lunch item. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Hey guys, every first and third Saturday, it's Lions. What do you say, Lord? What's that you said? What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? What's that, Lord? Got you. Listen, every third Sunday, we coming back to in-person Lions Den. <laughs> That's right, in-person Lions Den. Meet me in the Senior High building every third Sunday. It's just gonna be us fellas, and we gonna go ahead and chop this thing up. What are we chopping up? Manhood. We're gonna show you practical steps in manhood from a spiritual standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, and even a physical standpoint. Yes, and what you mean physical standpoint? I'm talking about body development. I'm talking about nutrition. I'm talking about how to change a tire, how to uh, check your uh, engine oil, how to tie a tie, the proper way to court a woman or to approach a young lady and different things like that. We're gonna be covering all of these different things. So if you're out there and you say, Pastor Ant-Man, I need some of that stuff. 
Cool. If you're out there and you say, Pastor Ant, you hadn't mentioned anything that I need. You still need to show up because God knows all and sees all and he knows exactly what you need. Even more than me. I was just a vessel. Lions Den, every third Sunday. I'll see you there. Ladies, guess what? PGR is coming to in-person services starting the third Sunday in January. We are going to be meeting live. I have so missed you guys. I've missed being able to come together and connect. I'm so grateful for Zoom, but now we will be meeting live in person. What you can expect is an experience like none other. There's gonna be sisterhood, great talks, fun activities, so much fun. Special guests, oh my goodness. The guests that we will have, I don't wanna tell you too much. You just have to be there. Meet me every third Sunday, PGR at WCYE. Can't wait to see you there. Oh my gosh, pretty girls rock. Hey, pretty girls rock. All right, y'all, I'm back. It's your main man, Greg, you already know, and I'm here with the joke of the day. All right, y'all, so why could the plank of wood never be entertained? Because he was always bored. <laughs> you get it? He was always bored, y'all. All right, if you got that, that's awesome for you. If you didn't get it, maybe next time, all right? Peace. World Changers Youth Experience is the team ministry for World Changers Church International, and we are looking for volunteers with a creative mindset. If you are creative, skilled in areas such as camera operating, video editing, producing rundowns and special services, operating in the media control room, being a praise team director, graphic design, social media, photography, or any other creative area you can think of to enhance the ministry, we want to meet you. All you have to do is text SERVE, W-C-Y-E, all one word, to 51555. If this sounds like an area you're interested in, let's get connected. She's in the dark room screaming help, but nobody's there In the corner, huddle close, she saw a few girls Leader of the pack said, welcome to your new world Where you get rewarded if you behave and do well But the other girls look like they was tortured in a cell She's standing on the corner all alone, feeling worthless A pimp told her, get that braille, lace her with a Birkin Doing things she never imagined, her heart is hurting She's feeling like she's trash and her life don't have a purpose Two abortions and she's 15, smoking hard She addicted to the heroin, injected in her arm Got locked up for prostitution, the story is tragic Too scared to tell the cops that she's being trafficked 25 to 40 milli worldwide, feeling trapped in So I don't need no dash for this, this a call for action So you can stand by idol and never make a change But 150 in the US getting trafficked every day Man, staggering Stats never make the front page never. Innocence lost, disguise is getting paid what? Evil people working together for exploitation uh. So let's raise the banner, unify, spread hope is God's nation go. Unidos somos un peligro para los traficantes uh. Un ídolo elegido por un dios gigante Big La cosecha God. es mucha, los obreros so. son poco Oro que el mensaje de Dios no caiga en oídos sordos uh. I don't know your pain, I don't know your shame I don't know your name, but I know your worth Hi guys, and welcome to our live streaming service. We want to thank you so much for joining us. 
What you're about to see is a pre-recorded message that we handpicked just for you today. We want you to be attentive and make sure you drop your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear what you think about today's message. All right, so sit back and watch, and we pray that you're able to hear this dynamic message picked just for you today. Enjoy. WCYU, let me make some noise in the building. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for these, your precious sheep. Lord God, I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Holy Spirit, have your perfect way in the hearts and minds of these young people today. I declare that every heart is anointed to receive and every ear is anointed to hear. In Jesus name, we pray. All that agree said. Amen. Amen. Um, let's give a shout out to Villa Rica real quick. Uh, Zephora, I see you over there with your brown hoodie on looking all cute. I see you, girl. How you see me? We got cameras in your other locations. So what's up with you? Um, whew. The message I have today is tough, but it's necessary. Um, so I need you to listen slow. And I need you to just hear me out first, okay? need you to be at a place where you're willing to listen to understand before you speak to be understood. Listen to understand before you speak to be understood. That's called empathetic listening, okay? It's, it's called, well, that's just how you listen. <laughs> if you're talking while I'm talking, then you're not actually doing what? Right. So I need you to listen to understand before you head to the mic to speak to be understood. Does that make sense? The message title today is, and excuse my uh, grammar, but change ain't change until you've changed. Change ain't change until you've changed. One of the things that I've noticed with not just young believers, but adults as well, is that we take, people don't go to hell for sin, they go to hell for rejecting Jesus. And we take grace, and we know grace isn't a subject, but grace is a person and his name is, and his name is Jesus. We take Jesus, we take his love, and we use it as an excuse to stay the same. And what I want to show you today is today we're going to go on a journey. And on this journey, I'm going to show you how Jesus doesn't cover your sin, but he empowers you to change. Now, some of you are looking like, Pastor Ant, why you got that big old white table on the stage with that white thing on it? I'll get to that later. But again, I really need you to discipline yourself to listen. And for the next 30 minutes, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, but I need all eyes on me. I need your ears fixated on me. I need your eyes fixated on me. And more importantly, babies, I need your heart fixated on me today. Trust me. But one of the things that I've witnessed is that I see a lot of young people have an appropriate, inappropriate relationship with the father by using his love for them as an excuse to continue in whatever bad behavior they've been doing. And they've settled for living a life of hell and experiencing heaven when they leave here. That's not God's will for your life. It's not. Now, it's not my job to judge your belief, so I won't do that. But today what I will do is show you how to examine your faith to see if you're actually in faith. That I can do. I don't go home with any of you. I don't. And it's not my position to sit up here and judge, oh, well, I heard you curse. You don't really believe in God. Or you're dealing with homosexual activity. You don't believe in God. Or you're dealing with this, or you're dealing with that, or you smoke, and you're you don't believe in God. But let's just be a little fair today, right? 
What if Pastor Ant walked up out of here with a perfectly rolled blunt of marijuana? What's up, y'all? Everybody, what's up, boy? You good? You Gucci, boy? You want to hit this? Man, people don't go to hell for sin. They go to hell for rejecting Jesus. I love God. What Pastor Dow said, you don't love God? What's wrong with you? How would you look at me? Look away. <laughs> he said I'd look away. A little different. Oh, it'd be more than that. Trust me. I got a message yesterday. You know, how many of you have fun at the uh, Heroes and Villains event? So check this out, right? On my Instagram, I posted a video of you guys dancing to the wobble in the, uh, cha in the uh, chapel of the junior high building. Then I went down into the game room and all you guys were fellowshipping and just kicking it with each other and just building memories. That's ultimately what that event was for, to build memories and to leave you and plant a seed in, into your hearts. But at about, a, at about 5.30 in the morning, that Saturday morning, I woke up and that's not unusual for me. I usually wake up that early, but I woke up and I heard a chime on my phone. So I looked at it and someone had left me a message. Someone I don't know. It was a, a, a guy from another state because I put the hashtag youth pastor. So I'm, I'm assuming he was a, a youth pastor. And he wrote a novel as a comment. You obviously knows. I'm like, wow, you really had a lot to say, didn't you? But what he said was, someone needs to put a stone around your neck and cast you into a sea for leading those kids to hell. That's what he said to me. Listen to me. Listen, listen to why he, listen to his justification of what he said. He said, how is the wobble song leading them to Jesus? So I examined it and I'm like, well, we have to identify what's worldly. What's worldly is the pride of life, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. When you guys hear the wobble song, you guys don't even really know the words to it, except for the parts that go. So you're having you're dancing. I've never seen. Dancing justify someone for going to hell. But I'm, I'm giving you that example to show you Pastor Anthony has changed. One of my best friends is carrying chairs right there. He came to visit, but he can't help but serve. Lil Meat, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Look, he's he trying to move a chair. That's Lil Meat right there, right? I grew up with Lil Meat. We've known each other since we was like 10 years old. Me and Lil Meat have done some of the most dangerous, uncalled for, senseless acts that some of you probably wouldn't even think about doing. Me and that guy have done these things. So when he hears what I just said about how this man I don't know made an idle threat, Pastor Anthony has changed. Because I can't say that I wasn't tempted to find out where he is, knock on his door and say, where that stone at, homie? You got that same energy you got when you was. But instead, when praise and worship came and not even just in praise and worship. But at home, what I did was I, I had to start renewing my mind. So what I did today is it's not that the temptation to think about that wasn't on me, but in praise and worship today. And that's why I really needed the praise team to go in and they did a phenomenal job. I was in the presence. I was there. I was right there with you. You wasn't singing, trying to get people to a place. You were at a place and the people who wanted to join you came to that place with you. See the difference? But I worship like I worship. I praise like I praise because in a way it's like me renewing my mind to what God has to say more than what people think about me. So I've changed. I'm not the man I used to be 20 years ago. 20 years ago, he definitely would have got the business straight way. I wouldn't have wasted no time. And Demetrius can tell you that. I wouldn't have wasted no time. I didn't do a lot of talking. If I had an issue with you, mostly the people around me would be holding me back because I didn't have control. 
Some people view that as a strength, but it was definitely a weakness that ultimately had me facing life in prison. I'm not the man that I used to be, and it's because of God's grace. God's grace changed me. It did not cover me to continue. Oh, well, I won't do it at church. I won't buck on people at church, but no one would know that I showed up to this man's house and beat the snot out of him. No, that's not me anymore. I've been changed. That's what grace does. It changes you. When I think about covering, I think about kids, eight, nine years old. Some of you still do it. But when you're in a room or you're home alone and you hear noise that you're not used to hearing, what's the first thing a little kid do? If they're in the bed, what they do? They get up under the covers. I've never understood that because it's like, what is that going to do? <laughs> oh, shoot, somebody coming. Get under the covers. Me and my wife play. Okay, never mind. Well, well yeah, well, I can say that. We play. We hear noise. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm a jokester, so Constance will tell you I'm always making a laugh, so I get up under the covers. I'm like, they coming, they coming. Who coming? I say, I don't know. She'll be like, oh, my God, they coming, they coming. I'm like, they coming. Hide, hide. And she just laughs. She just gets so tickled by that. I usually do it when she's mad at me to get, her to, <laughs> to get her to laugh. But we've become so used to covering things. We've been so used to pulling these covers over us to hide who we really are. And grace, when I say grace, you say Jesus. Grace, he's come to change. And he's empowered you to change. But it's as a result of your relationship with him that moves you to a place of making the decision to do what? Change. Amen. Is everybody with me so far? So I've got some scriptures because I want to show you some things. Second Corinthians 13 and five. Let's go to the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Change over cover. Change is greater than just covering. We're not talking about covering. Change. We're talking about true change. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be comfortable doing the same old, same old every day, day in, day out. And we'll have this, this will do attitude where it's like, well, as long as when I die, I get to go to heaven. But while I'm here, I experience hell. Who wants to live their life that way? Let's go to the scripture. Second Corinthians 13 and five. Move with me. I really need y'all to move with me back there. Second Corinthians 13 and 5, New Living Translation. I'll pull it up. Hallelujah. Okay. It says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Now, what is your faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But when I say faith, you say belief. Faith. Faith. Examine your belief. Examine yourselves to see if you believe or if your belief is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. In other words, what this scripture is saying is you can examine yourself based off of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, when I say grace, you say Jesus, grace, grace, Jesus, Jesus. Are you following me? You've got to test your belief. How do I test my belief to make sure that I really believe what I say? Because I know what I say, but Pastor Ant, I think I hear what you're saying. You're saying that if I do believe God loves me and I do believe all of the things that he died on a cross for me to be freed from, why would I continue in the things that he's freed me from? So I need to learn how to examine myself because what Pastor Anthony is not going to do because it's not my place to do, 
What I'm not going to do is judge you. That's not my place. That's your place. You've got to judge yourselves. Who are you when no one is around? What type of character is your relationship with God depending on your surroundings? When I'm at church, I'm straight. And then some of you, you get to church and it's like, well, I'm just going to be true to who I am because you don't want to be a hypocrite, right? And it's not about being a hypocrite. It's about do you know him so that you can show him? Do you know him so that you can experience heaven on earth instead of waiting until you die to experience this heaven? God has given you dominion over everything on this earth, including Satan. He's eliminated each and every excuse that you can possibly have to remain the same. And sometimes, babies, I see young people fight to stay the same. And we gotta, we gotta address that. It's not his will for you. Amen. Romans 12, one through two in the Amplified version. Why are believers trying to be like what they've been delivered from? When will what we hear become our private possessions that we value and allow to weigh heavy in our lives? I heard the word, I read the word, I see the word, and I want the word, I want what God has to say to weigh more heavy in my life than all of the things that I see around me because, yeah, I see them smoking over here, yeah, I see them cussing over there, but that's not me. That's not really me, but you know what? Hey, you know what? God loves me, and you know what? My parents did it, and you learn from your mistakes. You're only as good as the last mistake that you made, and you know, let me go try it out, and you know, he's already forgiven my past, present, and future sins, so why not? You see how the relationship with God becomes inappropriate? You see, if I know you, when we talk, I listen to you. It's not one of those things like I shared when we had the table where when we're talking, while you're talking, I'm on my phone, I'm doing everything else. And then when you start asking me questions about you, uh, what you had said was, when are we going to start owning what we hear from God's word instead of just owning what we see and hear from this world. Does that make sense? Let's go to the scripture. 12, I said 12, one through two in the Amplified version. And it says, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive, a decisive de dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service. Somebody say intelligent. Intelligent service and spiritual worship. Stay right there for a second. You see why Pastor Anthony goes in and worship? I'm not going in and worship for you guys. It's my way of renewing my mind as well because I'm human and I'm not the man I used to be, but that doesn't mean that the temptation to resurrect that old man doesn't come. Did I want to slap the taste out of that dude's mouth and find out where he was, take a plane trip to wherever he was and knock on his door and say, what you said? <laughs> Absolutely, I wanted to do that. And I could have, I can afford to do that. But then what? If you, a man that can't control his emotions is the weakest man in the room. So he said something and it moved me to spend money on a plane ticket to show up to where he was because everybody's, I know somebody knows somebody that knows somebody that know him. You understand? Easy. But I go in and worship. It says through spiritual worship. Verse two, do not be conformed to this world, this age, watch this, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be what? Be what? When I say transformed, you say change, transform, transform, changed, change, but be changed, transformed by the entire 
renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God. Keep going. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. What that says is purpose. It says be transformed, be changed. Don't remain the same. Don't, don't buy in and conform and bend and, and fold to all of these superficial customs that are around you that would have been totally what I would have been doing if I would have found out where that dude was and came after him. Because I take what he said, what he said, I take what he attacked, the part of me that he attacked, I take very seriously. I'm very cautious about what I allow to come out my mouth. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't see that goes into, that happens before I come up here and I open my mouth and let things out to you. You understand? I need to make sure that the word is sound. I need to make sure that the word is rightly divided. And I need to make sure that the word is at a place where you guys can understand it. And I'm not using just my common sense or you know my life experiences to prove it to you, but I can rightly divide the word of God to be able to give you the truth. There's a lot that goes into me coming up here and just opening, it's not just me opening up my mouth. You understand? But just knowing the perfect will of God that's acceptable and perfect in his sight for you, what's your purpose? What's your purpose? What has God given us and why? Romans 12 and 3, amplified version. Romans 12 and 3. Somebody say, change ain't change until you've changed. Say, change ain't change until you've changed. For by the grace, unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. I'm going to read it again. For by the grace, unmerited favor of God given to me, I want everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability, his ability, his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God in him. Now I want you to remember that word ability. Now let's look at this table. This table is here, right? You all agree that this is a table, yes? If I was to tell you to come and sit at this table and eat at this table, would you be able to in its current state? Why? Huh? It's not what? Say it again. It's not set up. This table represents, follow me. This table represents people or believers who say, well, people don't go to hell for sin. They go to hell for rejecting Jesus. Well, I can just continue to be a thought. I can continue to do all the other stuff that I do. I can continue. Oh, it's OK if I cuss. God has already forgiven my past, present and future sins. It's OK for me to do those things. Because at the end of the day, God has already forgiven me of those things and he loves me. So you use those things. You use God's love and you use God's grace or you use who Jesus is as an excuse or as a reasoning to be useless. And even in your useless state, he loves you. He's married to you. More than you can think or imagine. But the inappropriate relationship isn't on his part, it's on our part. I can't eat from this table. Others can't be serviced by me. Think about this. 
Do you know how many people are waiting for you to know who you are so that they can be who they are? Do you know how many unbelievers out there are waiting for you to accept and acknowledge that Christ is in you? We keep trying to love the idea of him being in us and not really taking advantage of that relationship part with us. Let me say something to you. God is not going to change you. He's going to empower you to change. He's not going to renew your mind for you. Renewing your mind is something you got to do. But what happens is we go, we wait until something bad happens. For me, it was facing life in prison. And then we go, oh Lord, please cover me, cover me, cover me. Like that kid that's scared and they want to get under the covers. It's covered. But you're still the same under there. Nothing has changed. As safe or as the feeling of being safe is there. But babies, here's the story that your parents didn't tell you. You could hide up under the covers, but if somebody want to come get you. I knew you was up under there. Get your butt up. What are you hiding? What, what is that? What is that going to do? Likewise. Don't be too quick to laugh. Likewise. You're a table, and this is just an example. You're a table. Your purpose, you're not even in the right position right now. Your purpose, is to start using the gifts God has given you, starting with, you got legs here. And to continue renewing your mind so that you can Fold out. And now you're positioned right. Right? But not only are you positioned right, but in your decision to be transformed, now this isn't a covering, this is a relationship. See the difference? This isn't a covering, this is a relationship. This relationship is here. And what the relationship is doing is protecting you from people spilling communion juice on you. From people, you know, what is communion juice? Or not even communion. For, for people spilling juice on you, what does the juice represent? Temptation to smoke. Temptation to have sex before marriage. Temptation, temptation to lie. Temptation to remain the same. It protects you. He protects you. But it's protecting you because of your cooperation with that relationship. Grace is a person that you have to cooperate with. He's not like Lucky Charms. He's not magically delicious. This isn't something that just happens, well, Lord, you can't treat God like Norbit. You do it, Norbit. Are you serious? You can't do that. But see, when you renew your mind to the word of God, you see, I renew my mind to the word of God sometimes 40, 50 times a day, because there's always things that's trying to be spilled on me to get me to fold. Now imagine if I was at a place where I didn't know any better. Somebody need to wrap a stone around your neck and throw you into a sea because you lead those kids to hell and then I let that affect me and then all of a sudden, just that quick. If I let it, everybody say let. let. If I let it. But see, with me, I know better. And how I took it is, oh man, I must be getting famous because now they're attacking me and I know what I know is real. But you can only know what you know is real if you really believe it. That's why I say examine your, examine your faith to make sure that it's real. Examine your life. When you go home, it shouldn't be easy to curse. 
It shouldn't be easy to, to uh, ladies, it shouldn't be easy to send provocative pictures and, 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 to, and to sneak around. It, anything that has to be sneaky, being sneaky is very hard. Would you agree? It's hard. And even when it feels easy, the part that makes it hard is when you're found out on it. Because then it's super hard to recover from that because now you've lost the trust of your parents. God's position with you is still good. Vertically, when I say vertically, I mean your relationship with God. Vertically, everything is all good. But horizontally with people, you're living in hell. And it's not a hell that God puts you in. It's a hell that you put yourself in. Are you hearing me? <laughs> he said, indeed. Hebrews 10 and 10. Amplified version, please. Hebrews 10 and 10. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you that I'm not the man that I used to be. You have no idea. Me. You remember Psycho Pimp? Rashad, light-skinned cat with the green eyes. You remember him? So he just got out of prison 15 years. Shakri gave him my number. Okay. Thank you. I remember Shakri. Shakri is the one who came up here with the baby. Dr. Dollar gave him some money over in the dome. He came over there. That's my Muslim friend. Shakri gave the dude my number. Shakri, you, you can't say Shakri don't give nobody my number. Shakri do what he want to do. After growing up with him, you just realize that and you just accept it. It is what it is. How many of you got friends like that? You know what? You just are who you are. It is what it is. I love you. Okay. So he sends me this message. I just got out of prison for 15 years, and he begins talking to me based off of his last encounter with me 15 years ago. And I had to say to him, Rashad, man, I'm glad you're out. But my dude, you don't, you don't know me. The man you knew dead. He don't even live no more. Because his conversation, it immediately took me back to a place mentally, because I'm like, you still talking like that? And what's up, boy? Boy, 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 I'm out here, boy, you already know, boy, you know I got them doggone Giuseppe's on my feet, boy, you know what I'm saying? Fresh out that thing, they couldn't hold your boy down, boy, I was up and they that. Boy, you 33 years old. Do you talk like that in front of your kids? What happened? He got stuck on that rat wheel where time is going by, but he's stuck and came out of prison 15 years later the same way he was 15 years prior. This is what the scripture says. It says, and in accordance with this will of God, we have been made, what? What have we been made? Holy, consecrated, and sanctified through the offering made once for all of the body of Jesus Christ, the anointed one. We've been set apart. We've been made holy. We've been made holy. God created us that way before you were even a thought in your great, 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 great. And I could keep going on with great, great grandparents before they were even a thought. He was thinking about you and the sacrifice that he did on that cross was so that you can be free from this life and be made whole through him, through your belief, through your faith in him. You got that? Through your faith, through your belief. I tell you, your belief can be verified. Each and every one of you believe that these chairs have the ability to hold you up. I can see that because you are doing what? Belief can be verified. So when I'm telling you, when you go home, you need to examine your faith. You need to examine your belief because what you should be showing, the whole objective is to know God and show God. Know God and show God. What you're showing should be able to show him and not what you've been seeing around you. Does that make sense? Galatians 5, 13. Let's go to the King James Version first and then we'll go to the New Living Translation. Galatians 5.13. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. What does liberty mean? Freedom. You've been called into liberty. 
only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, which means, oh, I turn it on when I'm here, but then when I leave, you know, I turn it off. This ain't me saying this. Who's saying this? The Bible. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. You see, when this table is upright, when you're upright, when you're in your purpose and you're renewing your mind to the things of God and it stays in your mind so long that it gets down into your heart and then out of the heart, the Bible says, flows the issues of life. The issues of your life become things that resemble him. And now people can come at your table and come to you and now you can service them. You can service unbelievers and they'll come to know Christ by way of how you live your life. God has set us apart for others, not just for ourselves, but for others. Go to the New Living Translation of this very scripture, the same scripture, Galatians 5, 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, Use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's why the attack is so big with all of this jealousy amongst the body. Even right now as I speak, there's people trying to distract you and trying to talk to you and try to keep you from what I'm saying. I want to, folk, I want to challenge you to put your eyes and your ears and your heart on me. Because God's trying to show you some things in his service today that can change your life. You know what? Let me change that. It'll change your life if you let it. God ain't going to change you. You have to make the decision to change. He'll give you the power to change. But I taught on this before. God has given you his power under what? My under your authority. Good job, baby. His power under We keep waiting on God, you do it, you do it, you do it. Well, when he's ready for me to change, he'll change me. That's not how this works. When I made a decision for myself to change, I had to do that. I had to do that. And I told you before, if you don't make God first in your life, then your circumstances will. Can I be all the way 100 with you? As far as when Pastor Anthony quit smoking weed, they put me on five years probation. So if I did smoke weed, the 22 years that they demoted it down, because I was originally facing life in prison, then they demoted it down to 22 years. But if I violate my probation, I've got five years to stay on the straight and narrow. If you don't make God first, your circumstances will. Why wait until the table breaks before you start developing a relationship with Christ. Why? What are you waiting on? This is your life. I'm not living your life for you. Your parents get frustrated because they want the best for you because you are flesh of their flesh and blood of their blood. You've come out of them. So of course they're going to be a lot harder on you than I'm going to be. But I'm going to give you the truth. I play my part, your parents play their part. So don't, and I see people do this, don't compare me to uh, don't, don't compare your parents to me. Well, Pastor Ant would do this and Pastor Ant cool with this. You better talk to my kids. I don't play the radio. A little bit. It's different. It's definitely different. Why? Those are my kids. There's a, there's a different position that I stand in with my kids. I hold them accountable on the highest levels. You understand? Hallelujah. So we've been given freedom to serve one another in love, not to be free to just do what appeases our flesh and create our own personal uh, on, on an off switch or create our own personal on and off switch with our relationship with God. That's not what this life is about. Oh, well, I'll choose, you know, y'all hate fate, don't you? Y'all hate when people just don't keep it all the way real with you. How many of you ever had a friend or somebody that you consider to be a, a, a very high associate that was on the verge of becoming one of my best friends and they come and they act one way around you, but then when another group of people come around, they switch up on you. How many of you have ever had that? 
Y'all hate that, don't you? What's the difference between that and what some of you do with God? You create your own personal on and off switch. Praise team, I need y'all to watch this YouTube clip 20 times. Got me? Philippians 2.13. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Go to the King James Version. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Go to the Amplified Version. Is that 13? Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. The power is there, but the authority is up to you. Lord, I smoke. Lord, I curse. Lord, I drink. Lord, I lie. Fix me. And he's saying, I've made you to be this way, but you keep choosing to do this. I've given you the ability. Let's put the definition of ability up on the screen for me. Do that for me. I've given you the ability to change. I've given you the power. I've given you the possession of means or skill to do something. I've given you the talent, skill, or proficiency in a particular area. But if you have a talent or if you possess a talent, you have to do what with it? If I give you a tool to fix this speaker and you have the instructions and you have the necessary tools, you just having the tools won't fix this speaker, will it? What do you have to do? You got to read the instructions, right? And then you have to use the tool that he's given you. God has given you the tool to change. It's his word. He's not going to change you. You have to change you by reading this word. He's given you the tool to change. You have to use the tool. Do you see how the relationship with God can become inappropriate? Whole time, you're praying, Lord, fix me in this area, fix me in, in this area. I can't, I can't. You know, it's funny to see what people can't do until they're challenged with something. I can't stop lying, daddy. I can't stop lying, daddy. Daddy, I, I be trying, man. I can't stop lying. Lie one more time. I'm going to knock your teeth out. Okay, I took it, and then I did this, and then I went up under the bed, and then when I did it, you tell more than the truth. When that threat is there, you do what you want to do. Young men, I see young men getting physical violently with young ladies. Girl, come here when I'm talking to you. Yeah, it's easy to do that. Until a daddy come up, I wish you would touch my daughter like that. I wish you would, I wish you, I wish, and I'm a changed man. But you put your hands on my daughter, any of my kids, you gonna see me. I'm one of those parents. Trail got into a fight at school, they jumped him. I'm showing up to the school. Have that same energy when I come. You understand? You understand? I don't, I don't play about that. But it's funny to see what people say they don't have control over until they've got control over it. Hmm? Make sense? I can't, I, I can't stop. You know, I gotta, it's just a little, it's just a little habit. I know it's a bad habit, but it's just a little habit. I smoke cigarettes. And on the cigarettes, I tell you, surgeons, this. Right? I smoke cigarettes. Oh my God, I smoke cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes. I can't stop smoking cigarettes. You go to the doctor. Uh, ma'am, you have six months to live. However, we can reverse it if you just stop smoking cigarettes. Oh, I can stop smoking cigarettes. That's easy. 
When was it a problem? Oh, no, no. Why do you wait until the table breaks? What type of, re what what type of relationship do you have with him? I praise the way I praise because I know what he's done for me. I lift my hand in worship and I'm giving him everything I got, not to show off in front of y'all, but I know what he's done for me. I have a relationship with him. I talk to him. He talks to me. I know his voice. I involve him in things. I don't just move based off of what I want to do. But I allow him so much weight. I allow his words to weigh so heavy in my life that they weigh more than the temptations that come my way to slap somebody. Do the temptation come to slap a joker? Yeah, the temptation come to slap a joker. Do it come to slap a joker and, and, and slap them till I see spit fly out their mouth? Of course it does. Would it give me pleasure? Yeah. Absolutely. But then how will you view me? World Changes Youth Experience, World Changes Church International, Dr. Dollar and Pastor Taffy's senior youth pastor incarcerated, locked up for slapping a joker. <laughs> Headlines, you can see it now. Fox 5 News all over Instagram, boom. The youth pastor slapped the taste out of a joker's mouth. Was it worth it? Can you eat from my table? Some of you would, but some of you be like, what type of preacher is you? What type of believer are you? No judgment. <laughs> I want you to judge yourself. It's not my job to judge you. It's your job to judge you. Examine yourselves. Is that making sense? Examine yourselves. Examine your faith. Let's go back to that scripture. I want to make sure that I get that scripture in you. Second Corinthians 13 and five, New Living Translation. Examine your faith. Examine your faith. What does what does what does examining my faith? And then after I identify and after I've examined my faith, what do I do next? So the scripture says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. In other words, it's saying, see if your faith is real. See if what you say out your mouth, you believe is real. Examine your belief. To make sure your belief is genuine. Examine yourself to make sure your belief is genuine. Test yourselves. What does the testing look like? The testing looks like, ladies, a lot of time it don't take much, but ladies, as soon as you know a young man thinks you're attractive, it changes you a little bit. Same thing with the fellas. It changes you a little bit. Whether you think the other person is attractive back or not, the fact that you know that they think you're attractive changes you a little bit. You walk a little different. Am I, am I, talk, am I lying? No. Ladies, the majority of the time, when, you, when you're going through that testing yourselves part, right? When you find out the young man thinks you're attractive, whether you think he's attractive or not, you change a little different every time you walk around. Hi, hi Chris. Hi. Fellas, <laughs> fellas, what's up, little mama? You good? All right. Chewing the gum extra hard. You know. What's up, man? What's up, man? Shut up! What you doing all that for? What? But the testing part comes. You know this person thinks you're attractive. You know that you have no intentions with this person, but you begin to feed into that attraction. Especially when you think the other person is attractive too. Because now it goes from just the, 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 the knowing that this person is attractive to now you're, you're trying to engage in something. And when you fast forward that involvement or that engagement, you always end up frustrated. How many of you always, how many of you can go back to a time when you first met somebody and then think about when that relationship ended and then you say to yourself, that was such a waste of time. 
So you'll have time to test yourselves because the ultimate goal, watch this, listen, the ultimate goal is to know him, know him, know him, know him and show him. The ultimate goal is to know him and show him, but when it comes down to that showing him part, you can't because you don't really know him. You love the idea of him. Did Jesus have a brother? How old was Jesus when he was crucified? You see why we did the game last week when we had two strangers talk to each other? Do you know him? Do you know him? Test yourself. Examine yourselves. Test to see if your belief is genuine so that you can go from loving the idea of having a savior and you can finally get to a place where you embrace your savior. Ladies, some of you going, you dating young men don't even know your middle name. Ask them your birthday. Ask them your favorite color. I did this in my house the other day. I said, Shane, tell me something about Riley. He was like, <laughs> she get on my nerves sometimes, but she cool, she cool, she cool. I said, Riley, tell me something about your brother. No, I said, uh, Trail, tell me something about your sister. He went in and Shane did too. They know each other, but they got the point in what I was saying. You guys know more about people outside of this house than you know about each other and you live with each other. I'm relating that to your relationship with Jesus Christ. Christian, you play football, right? You spend a considerable amount of time, amount of time on the field, yes? But if you don't know the plays that the quarterback is giving you, what happens when you get on that field? Say that again. Come to the mic for me. I need you. How important, Christian, and Christian has D1 offers from a variety of schools, and he's in the 11th grade. So, yeah, y'all make some noise for that. It's a big deal. Christian, how much time do you spend learning your playbook? Five to ten hours a week. So that's about an hour and a half to two hours a day, yes? yes sir. Is it important? Yes, sir. Have you ever been in a huddle up and a quarterback say a play and you not know what to do? Can't do that. You can't do that. Because otherwise, because you play offense or defense? I play defense and offense. Bro. You, play, you play offense too, though, right? Defense, you play defense, but you played offense? Okay, so let's go from an offensive standpoint. You did? All right, let's go. If you don't know the plays, then all you'll be doing is the basics or the fundamentals of football, which means if the ball comes your way, you're going to catch it. But see, in these specific plays, you were supposed to go right. But because you don't know the play and you're just trying to wing it in life, you go the opposite way. The ball ends up here because that's where he told you to be. But you went this way trying to wing it, hoping and praying the ball is going to come to you. Does it work like that? And when you get back in that locker room after so many times of not knowing the plays, what happens, Christian? What happens? You get totally taken out of the game. It's okay. Y'all have heard noise before, right? It's all right. You get totally taken out the game. Christian, let me ask you a question. In life, the Word of God is a book of, it's a playbook. It shows you which way to go, which is why the Bible says, and you can pull that scripture, 
back up as far as Romans, right? 12, 1 and 2, amplified. It's giving you the play where you know which way to go, you know what to do, and when you know the playbook, you can now execute it with what? Confidence. One of these days, he's going to be up here preaching this message because he gets it. There's a difference between moving in confidence, knowing you'll move, and just out here winging it like this table. This table can't even be used. It's useless. But it's still a table. You following me? You're still a child of God. But just because you were made that way, you have to make sure that you renew your mind so that you can remind yourself who you are when everything around you is trying to convince you that you're somebody else. You see how life works now? You live in a world that's trying to convince you and trying to finesse you out of your identity and get you to conform to its ways, right? To say, he said, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God. In other words, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all of your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, what's the word? Intelligent, because ain't none of y'all dumb, is you? In other words, remaining the same using God's grace or using Jesus as an excuse to remain the same is stupid. which is your reasonable, rational, and intelligent, what's the word? Service. And, one, two, go to uh, the next part. Spiritual worship, verse two. <sighs> Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after a, and adapted to its external superficial customs. What's the norm now? It's the norm for girls to go on live and as soon as they go live on their on they Instagram, they got the most hooded song playing and they, oh, uh, oh. Uh, Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, and my edge is popping. What? Who made you? This is, or, or, or the fellas, only thing, and it's crazy because this is what they do. Most of the fellas, they get on and they playing 2K where they got a whole room full of folks. And they, yo, yo, that's what's up, that's what's up. Uh, what y'all doing? I bet you won't do that. Oh, uh, shut up, boy, what's up, boy? Play me in 2K, I bet I beat you. Boy, you crazy in your head, boy. You ain't gonna be nothing, boy. <laughs> What's your rating on 2K? Boy, shut up, boy. You already know I'm adding this thing. Now, look, there's nothing wrong with that until it becomes your new demeanor and it becomes who you are when you leave and you go to school and it's that. You come to church worship it's time to praise God and you can't even praise him because you don't know him you can't even thank him for what he's done because you've become so blinded by all of these superficial things that you can't see what he's done but every breath you take is something to be thankful for this coming Saturday I'll be doing a home going for Charles' son who was killed to death. It's home going Saturday. Be thankful for the air you have. You understand? Quit conforming. Quit trying to return and, and conform to what God has freed you from. Position yourself by renewing your mind. When you renew your mind, this doesn't become a cover. It becomes protection. God's grace is, is, a, is, is protective 
God has given you the power and the power has to be used by you. Power is a tool that's under your authority and you have to use it. God isn't going to change you. Grace, you have to change you. Grace Hodges, you got to do it. God ain't going to do that for you, Grace. You got to do it. He's given you the power to do it, but the power is only a tool. You have to execute it. You have to pick up that word and you have to believe what the word says and become it so that you can know him. Ultimately, so that you can show him. Don't be this. Stand to your feet. Whew. It's quiet in this youth ministry. I love you. <clears throat> Each and every one of you. But the love I have for you can never compare to God's love for you. And watch this. The love that you have for him can never compare to the love he has for you. I use the example of the football playbook because a lot of believers are out there just winging it like the Falcons. playing the game without knowing the plays. He says, go right, you go left. He says, don't do that, you do that. And you're just hoping and praying, well, maybe he's going to have, watch this, mercy and grace is going to change the Bible or change the play or call an audible so that it can come to wherever I am. That's not how that works. Offensive coordinators getting fired left and right. <laughs> but see, Jesus plays, they work. But you got to read them so that you can follow them. And if you know the plays, you can show the plays. And now the rest of the team can eat it because he's given us this power so we can serve others in love. That's it. See, in we fight to you to serve you in love too, because you can't serve others until you fix your identity issue. Amen? If you're in here today and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal savior, I want you to come up to this stage and we're gonna fix that. If you're in here today and even as I've been speaking, the Holy Spirit has been talking to you and been saying, he just gave you the truth. You got to examine yourself and you want to learn more about examining yourself so you can examine your faith. You can examine your belief to see that it is genuine. That scripture is 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. 2 Corinthians 13. It talks about examining yourselves Testing your faith to see that your faith is genuine, to see that your belief is genuine. I'm not going to judge you. You judge you. And until you do that, don't be coming to me talking to me about, oh, it's still like this. It's still like this. People do what they want to do. Don't tell me what can't happen. Don't tell me it's impossible. You do what you want to do. If you're in here, you need prayer for anything. Come up here. Don't wait. Let's fix this thing, man. If you're in here and you say to yourself, Pastor Anthony, you know what? I want to get involved in team ministry. I want to join the production team. I want to join the media team. I want to join uh, the, the band. I want to join the music department. Come up here. If you want to start planning services, whatever it may be, come up here. Y'all make some noise for her. At this time, turn to your left and to your right. If someone needs help coming up here, bring them up here. If they need prayer, 
Pray with them right where, they, right where you are. Go. Sick them. Quick announcements. Uh, the pie eating contest winner, Noni Amira. Please see Brian next Sunday to claim your prize. I don't know. Was that the announcement? Okay, okay. Uh, make sure you get some candy on your way out. I want y'all candy wasted. And we got an influx of candy, so help yourselves. Now nah, they, now nah, they. You know how y'all are. You know, you, you go to the restaurant, they got mints at the table, and you always got that one that you. Like, who made you? What are you doing? All right. Zephora and Villa Rica, did you learn something today, baby? I love you. Um, that's it. Sign up for paintball. Um, out in the, uh, if you hadn't signed up already, just sign up out there at the Welcome Center. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have a good time. All of these events are so that we can create memories. I want you guys to remember that time we were shooting. Oh, you remember this happened, that happened, you know. That's what it's all about. And then finally, hey, you want an opportunity to renew your mind? At 7 a.m. tomorrow, we have the plug on the line. The plug on the line is when we pray from 7 a.m., to 7 30 they're getting ready to put the graphic on there now watch this watch this this is what y'all don't know every time y'all we know who's on the phone we know how long they stayed on the phone your number shows up your name shows up all that shows up so i'm like was you on the call last week yeah i was on that past and you lying i just don't say nothing because i don't be wanting to go there Praying doesn't make you righteous, but righteous people pray. Praising God doesn't make you righteous, but righteous people praise God. Does that make sense? Examine yourselves today. Father God, I declare and decree over this now generation that they are blessed going in and blessed coming out. I declare, Lord God, that there's a hedge of protection over their hearts and over their minds. And I declare, Lord God, that the tools that you've given them by way of your power, by way of your love, by way of yourself, I declare that they're able to use it, that they're able to acknowledge it, and that they're able to take responsibility and renew their mind and change and not want to be covered or, or, or hide things, but to be transformed by renewing their mind in who you are so that they are. I declare that so over their lives. What is up, WCRE? It's Rikinzi here, and I'm getting ready to do our thing with you guys. So first, I'm going to introduce a little scripture real quick. It's 2 Corinthians 9-7. It talks about how you should give because you want to, not because you're being pressed to or because you feel like you should. And when we think about offering, we think about how God, how much God has done for us. And it's another way of worshiping God and telling him gratitude and showing him thanks. So when you give offering, make sure you don't do it just because you feel like you should do it or you're being pressed to do it because you actually want to do it. So if you're going to give, make sure you text WCRE18 plus your amount to 74483. If you'd like to mail your amount to the church, you can mail it at 2500 Bernard Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. And make sure you put Attention Team Ministry. All right, now I'm gonna pray over you guys to see it for you real quick. So you can, if you want, you can close your eyes, you can lift it up, you can put it on the screen, whatever you wanna do. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord, thank you for everybody who decided to sell today and who didn't sell as well, Lord. And we just bless these people, Lord, and these seeds that we're gonna go 
and they're gonna change lives for it. And that people will be engaged with a joyful heart and not welcome feet and just stay with me. Alright, that's all I have for you guys today. Bye. Alright y'all, it's Greg for the last time. It was a pleasure doing this service with y'all. You know, we got into the word. We did praise and worship. We did offering. We did the student takeover. I want y'all to comment what your favorite part of service today was in the live chat. So this is Greg signing off and I'll see y'all next time. Peace. WCYE, WCYE, world changes, world changes. Hey, this is Pastor Lissuarell. Pastor with the blue hair because I really do care. Listen, you have probably just watched an amazing service for senior high. Well, listen, high schoolers, you're in the right place. Middle schoolers, we want to make sure that you get to the right place on WCYE Junior High Studios, where we have a service designed especially for you. So we'll see you there next week. World Changers Youth Experience is the team ministry for World Changers Church International, and we are looking for volunteers with a creative mindset. If you are creative, skilled in areas such as camera operating, video editing, producing rundowns and special services, operating in the media control room, being a praise team director, graphic design, social media, photography, or any other creative area you can think of to enhance the ministry, we want to meet you. All you have to do is text SERVE, W-C-Y-E, all one word, to 51555. If this sounds like an area you're interested in, let's get connected.